Hey guys, Justin here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to create your very own costing blog post design in Elemental Pro. Now, whether you're familiar with Elemental Pro or not, the one thing that it does not allow you to do is fully customize the way that your blog posts look when you go to your blog page. So what we're going to be doing today is rather than relying on something that looks like this, we are going to transition that into something that looks like this. Now guys, before we jump on the computer and I run you through this step by step, I just wanted to say that over 70% of you who are watching my videos have not yet subscribed, which is crazy. So if that's you, what I recommend you do is hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll be notified of all my future releases. There are also loads of other videos on this channel which are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business. So go and check those out, you'll find them super beneficial. Now, without further ado, let's jump on the machine. So here we have our typical posts widget and by default we have the option to use a classic skin like so or we have the option to use cards or we can use full content like this. Now by default we don't have the option to have this custom element and that's what we're going to be covering today. Now as I mentioned Elemental doesn't allow you to do this natively so we do need to rely on another plugin. So the first thing we need to do is head to plugins. Now from your add plugin screen I want you to head to the search bar and search for Elemental, Elemental custom skin. And you'll see that it's this one here called Elemental custom skin and it's from Dudaster and it has a nice little purple icon there. So this is the one that you want. What you want to do is install that and activate it. You can see here that we already have it activated. Once that is activated, head to your themes builder within Elementor, which is templates and theme builder. And you'll now see that we have this option of a loop, which wasn't there before. So in order to create our custom blog post loop, we just want to click the add new button, select a loop from our dropdown, and then we're going to call this something like blog posts and then create template. Cool, in this instance, we are not gonna be relying on any of the blocks from the Elemental library, so we're just gonna close this. Cool, so we're given our typical Elemental page builder canvas, which is excellent. And what you need to bear in mind is we are gonna to have to design this element at full width of the page. So if we add a new column by clicking the plus and then clicking a full width section, you'll see that this now takes up the full width but what's great is it's given us a preview underneath of a four column option so whatever changes we make to this we are going to see also replicated down here just to give us an idea of how it's looking in multiple columns now in this section i want to add the featured image to the blog post to sit in the background so we're going to click on these six dots and then on the left hand side head up to style and then we want to go to background and click classic Classic is going to give us an option to add a color or an image. Now we want to add an image. Now we don't just want to add any image from our library. We want to dynamically pull that in. And we can do that by clicking on our dynamic tag option here. And then you'll see top of the list featured image. Cool. So you can see that that is pulled in a image so far. Now I want to change the position of this to center. And also I want the size to be cover. So that's just basically going to allow the image to cover the full width and height of the box. Now this isn't looking much at the moment, but we now need to add our blog title. So we want to head up to our nine dots and we want to bring in post title. Like so, click and drop that in. Excellent. So that's dropped that in and it's dropped in as a H1. We're going to change that to a H2. And also I want it to be a little bit more visible. I don't think the blue is ideal here. So we just want to change the color of this one. So if we go to style, I'm going to change the color to white. So if we get a typography, we can up our size here like so. Let's go, let's go 38. That looks a lot better. Now one thing I notice is it's not standing away from the image in the background. So I think adding a background overlay to this container is really going to help here. So if we head back over to the six dots and edit this section, underneath our background in style, you will see that we have a background overlay option. And again, we have to choose a classic option and we have the option of a color or an image. Now, I don't really know why you would add an image overlay to an image, um, but the options there. Um, but what we wanna do is select color and I'm just gonna choose a black. Now by default, the opacity is down at 0.5, which is 50% opacity. If we drag that up, 
you'll see that it goes solid black and if you drag it down then more of the image is coming through so i'm going to stick that up at around 50 percent and as you can see the text is a lot easier to read now let's go back to the text by clicking on this pencil and what i want to do is head to content and we want to add a link to this because i want the people to be able to click this title and go through to the blog post so in order to grab the blog post URL, we need to go to dynamic tags again and we're going to select post URL. Now, what this does is it turns it into a link which will now link through to the blog article. Now, additionally, I want to add a bit more to this. I want to pull in the post category. So if we head back up to our nine dots, this time I'm going to click heading and I'll drag that in and I'm going to change this to a div tag. Then we're just going to change the style of this ever so slightly by going to style. I want to change the typography. I'm just going to have this as our ascent text, like so. And I think the color is fine. Now we need to pull in our categories here for that individual blog post. So we're going to head back over to content and where it says add your text, we're going to delete that. And we're going to click dynamic text, uh, dynamic tags, sorry. Now here, we want to click on post terms. And then once that's selected, we want to click it again. And by default, it's going to try and pull in the post tags but actually what we want is to pull in the post categories. Like so, you can now see that we've got exploring and solo travel. Now by default, these are turned into links, which is great. So if you wanted to click each one of these, it would take you to that category page showing all of the posts within that category. So really useful. Now we've got those two sorted. Now I want to add a button, which is going to allow them to also click and read the article. So if we head back to our nine dots, scroll down and where it says button, I just want to click and drag that in like so. Now we can change the text of the button here to read more. You'll notice that there's some slight spacing on the left hand side and this is because it automatically tries to add spacing for an icon but we don't have an icon so you just need to adjust that back to zero and it's going to remove that. So just a little tip for you there. Now in the link we then want to add our dynamic post URL as well like so. So if we scroll down, you can see how this is looking and text wise, it's looking good. You can see everything it's all legible and readable. The one thing I don't like is how close all of these elements are to the side. So we can add some padding to this. So what we want to do is add padding to our container. So you want to go back to the six dots, head up to advanced and where it says padding, we can start adding padding. So if we go with 30 pixels, that's going to create some nice space at the top and the bottom and already that's looking so much better which looks great now one final thing i want to do is i actually want to increase the space of the container here now we can do that by heading to our nine dots scroll down and i want to add a spacer and i'm going to click and drag that in up here to sit above our exploring and solo travel categories so you can see that it's already created some additional space, which looks nice, but I want to increase that. And by default, it's given us 50 pixels. I'm actually just going to change that up to 150, like so. And if we scroll down, you can see that this is looking really good. I'm really happy with this. So once you have designed something that you are happy with, you need to then hit down, head down to the green button and hit publish. Now, you don't need to worry about any display conditions. You just want to click save and close. So now we want to head back to our blog posts template page and we want to select our post container and here we have the option to change the skin. Now that we have the custom skin plugin installed within here we're going to have the option to choose custom and then from here we just need to select a template so we've got feature posts and blog posts like so. So already you can see that it looks really different and it's pulling in the custom template that we just created and everything is working dynamically as it should, which is excellent. Now, this doesn't look great on a three column design because we've got this sidebar in here. So space wise, it doesn't look ideal. So what we can do is if we on the left hand side here, scroll down and go to columns. You can either choose a two column option or you can choose a one column option, which actually I think the one column option works really, really well. So there you go. This blog page looks so much better than it did before. And it just gives you so much more flexibility in producing a fully custom WordPress blog. Now, just to show you how this works. So as you can see, this is now a link and we also have a read more button. And if I click this, 
and it's going to take us through to the individual post page to allow us to read the article so it works really really well so there you have it guys hopefully you found it useful i really like this plugin it really allows me to take my designs to the next level and hopefully you can now do that too now if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate that also hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you haven't done so already there are tons of other videos on this channel as well which are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business so go and check those out you will find them really useful now we've got some great videos coming up on this channel so make sure that you keep your eyes peeled for them but that's it for now guys and i will catch you in the next video